then we continue with the various signals and now we can think about also measuring left ventricular strain. So it's relatively difficult. So the multiplane didn't help us so much, but here we have a, a four chamber view, a two chamber view. And I would even take, I would even take a five chamber view and show you how you can use or utilize the five chamber view by means of strain imaging. So let's take this and let's try it. We have here our signal and this we take the first one and we do a mirror image and now we have the same walls as we have in the apical long axis view. So with the five chamber view you can tremendously help yourself. And I see the automated measurement shows you not all the myocardium involved in the, the, the measuring. So that's something we have to tackle. So we have to have a larger region of interest, a larger ROI. And we also have to adjust the measurement on our own a little bit. So this is not generally recommended, but if you have a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, as in this case, and you see that there's really a hypertrophied ventricle, you should adapt. Also, that being said, if you have a, a situation where you do not have that much time, it also most likely will show a similar similar situation when you measure it with only the normal measurements where you not adjust the thickness that much because the overall strain will look approximately the same. So now we have this and we see several regions which are reduced, especially the hypertrophied regions you have the individual curves and we continue and now it tells us we have to find our own loops because we of course started a little bit unconventionally and now we use the four chamber view in the four chamber view we also have to adapt but again so use use a, a region of interest which fits the most parts and do not measure blood or the pericardium, so we have to adjust a little bit, but overall this will be fine. Now we process and we do see also here the strain, it is reduced, the ejection fraction probably a little bit underestimated, but we do see curves and in the region where the heart muscle is the thickest, it's definitely reduced. We continue. So the two chamber view and also in the two chamber view now that we adjust it we need to adjust a little bit more in this in this situation as well but i think it's overall quite fine so the the machines nowadays they look for the individual loops and they measure everything by themselves so normally the measurement won't be that off now again i want to see the two chamber view so here it is a bit a bit underestimated so we, we probably have to adapt it a little bit but this is just now, I would say, cosmetics. Let's see what we got. We got an overall strain of minus 12.5, the overall ejection fraction around 60%. That's also what I think. The measurement looks valid, so we will go with this. We also do see that the regions where the heart is thicker, they are reduced. The other regions, they are not that reduced, but still reduced. So that's a typical feature of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and you do see also a basal to apical gradient. It's not typical for amyloid heart disease for example, but it's definitely path pathological and worth to notice. Now we continue with the bullseye exam or the bullseye where we see several time intervals here. It's even better than we measured before. It is around 60 milliseconds. The strain is in the range of minus 12.5, minus 13. That is something I believe. So it's gradually continuing to be better. We started around minus 10%, so it's definitely improved. And we also saved this image. So normal is around minus 20, so we are still far away from normal, but it's progressing to be better and better. We have a post-systolic index, which is the highest in these areas where the hypertrophy is present. And we have a dispersion where we can see the curve. So green is good, everything happens at the same time. This is the article of closure, but there are some which differ and here you can see the post-systolic shortening we have in this curve at the apical long axis view, the basal anterior septal segment. Now 
Also the curves we can save and evaluate for all situations for the post-systolic index. So blue means post-systolic. So after systole we have the most shortening. Here we have the aortic valve closure. You can also check out the specific lecture on strain imaging. And here we go back to the normal bullseye display we know. We can also check ejection fraction. So here it is in the same range overall. Probably a little bit underestimated, but that I can live with. So I'm quite happy with what we found. Now let's go back to the bullseye. And the last thing I want to show you is myocardial work. Here it says you want to set a, a, a time marker or what you have in strain I choose strain. And we had the blood pressure, if I remember correctly, 138 to 82 millimeters of mercury. So this is a measurement where you need the blood pressure. And then you have also some bull's eyes. And we have here time intervals and also how the heart is actually working. And we see several measurements. So here we have a global work index. It's reduced, not severely reduced, but reduced. The global constructive work, the inefficient work, and the overall how the myocardium works together, I would say. So the global uh, work efficiency. And we have here 95%. This is normal. The ineffective work with 70 millimeters of mercury percent is also normal. It's, so it's, it's not working inefficiently, but it's working overall a little bit less. So this is a millimeter of mercury percent evaluation because it's strain plus the blood pressure. And here we can see the various situations where you have the strain pressure curve. And here it is normal. You can see that quite nicely. And the ones who are not working properly, you see there are different curves. So this is less when the segments are working less. And here we have the work efficiency. And most of his segments are working quite efficiently, which is quite good. So they are doing all the same in the same time interval. Here you see green is good, blue is not good. So a lot of green means good and 95% is actually a normal measurement we also would see in young health individuals. But overall it's a reduced global work index and global constructive work.